Let's quickly discuss on artifact binding and then we can just uh, jump to the session. So, artifact binding. Artifact binding uh, flow will look little complex, but yeah, let's understand how that is happening and then yeah, maybe you can implement in your application or yeah, or in the project also maybe it is working. So, let's first uh, let me draw here service provider SPLC and here we have the IDP okay identity provider and then we have somewhere here like the browser okay let's try to understand like we start from the initial and then yeah we can see how the things are happening in the artifact binding so the first thing like uh, a request will go to the service provider but definitely service provider is not going to authenticate the user the first request will go from the browser only like the user will go to the browser like I'll make, let me draw like this also okay and then the request will go to the sp i'll say this as a request one okay this is a request only Okay, the request basically went to the SP, but SP definitely don't know who the user is and in general how uh, basically we know that, right? So now, SP will, what SP will do in the next step, it will basically, service provider have two things. One is the artifact ID, I'll say AID, artifact ID, and the next one is SAML request, okay? So the SAML request along with artifact ID basically sent to the browser can say that is a step number two point number two see the first step the browser sent a request to the SP now SP don't know who the user is so SP just generated a SAML request along with artifact ID sent to the browser now browser will send that to the IDP we can say here this is a three so in third step this AID artifact ID sent to the along with SAML request to the IDP now what IDP will do IDP will definitely look for the user uh, authentication right and then it will basically send a artifact resolve request to the SP so here you can see here is a browser communication happening right from 1 to 2 to 3 like this but in the fourth step like as you can see here IDP received the artifact ID along with the request after this in the fourth step this IDP will send a I will say artifact resolve request. I will say ARR. Let's say here ARR. Okay. Artifact resolve request. Say this is point number four to the SP. Okay. Now SP will fetch this artifact ID from its own database. So they have their own database where like uh, they have the artifact ID SAML request like this. So with this artifact resolve request it will fetch the artifact ID from its database. So SP have some database you can see where basically they have the SAML request with the artifact ID that basically it's sent to the uh, in the request number two in the point number two you can say. So what happened here like in the third step IDP received the artifact ID with the request SAML request. Now IDP is basically sending the artifact resolve request to the SP in fourth number step. In fifth number step it basically as I mentioned service provider will fetch the artifact ID from its database so it's a database I'll say DS and here it's the artifact ID and the SAML request so it basically fetch that artifact ID from the database after receiving this artifact resolve request because SP has to verify that's why first it uh, received the artifact resolve request and then it will basically fetching the artifact ID from its database once this step is done then on the 6th what happened on the 6th the SP will basically send the artifact resolve response to the IDP so here you can see what is this ARR it's artifact resolve request sent from IDP to SP SP basically fetch the artifact ID from the database and then it will just generate a artifact resolve response and then send to the IDP so we'll say here this is also a point number 6 
in point number six also you can see there is no browser communication okay so now basically we are sending this artifact resolve response let's say this is also a, a arr only to the idp now once idp receives this arr artifact resolve response then the journey basically ends here so now in the seventh step basically idp will just generate a saml response and send back to the sp a saml response in the seventh step and the journey will end so in this case the mainly what is happening like the browser is basically sending a request to the sp sp don't know so sp has basically sent a artifact id with a saml request to the to the idp now idp basically just uh, sent a arr artifact resolve request without browser this is basically back channel protocol you can see in the fourth step what is happening here it's a back channel one second you mention here yeah. back channel protocol that's why it's called as a back channel protocol because here you can see there is no browser is coming in the picture so first step from browser request went to sp sp has don't know who the user is so basically it send a aid artifact id with the sample request to, with uh, via, to browser from browser the, uh, the artifact id and the request went to the idp idp basically handle the authentication as, as it is doing then just send that arr artifact resolve request to the sp now sp west uh, uh, received that RT arr artifact resolve request and then basically fetch the uh, artifact id from its database that is step number 5 and then it basically generates the artifact resolve response arr in the 6 and send back to the idp so there basically this artifact uh, uh, flow is ending and then idp is basically generating a saml response and sending back to the sp so in this case you can see there are few communication happening using browser as you can see in the 1 2 3 these steps are basically happening using browser so here basically you are just interacting with the browser browser sending the request then you are sending that aid and saml request to the browser and then from browser to the idp so the browser is coming to the picture whereas in the 4th 6th 7th you can see that you are just directly interacting there is no browser is coming so using back channel protocol using that you are interacting directly to the sp that means you can see the idp send the arr artifact resolve request and then you receive a artifact resolve response from the sp that this is all happening through uh, back channel protocol not using browser so this is directly uh, so that's why it's uh, fourth and sixth you can say this this uh, this steps are direct binding here you are directly just talking these two parties are talking that's why you called as a direct binding of fourth sixth right direct binding whereas 1 2 3 where browser is interacting so we can say those steps are a indirect binding indirect binding right that's why i just told you in the uh, previous session that artifact binding is also called as a hybrid binding why as you can see there are multiple bindings are used uh, together in this flow that's why artifact binding is also called as a hybrid binding as you are seeing here that you have indirect binding and direct binding direct binding means you are interacting with the browser when the request is initiated and then you send the aid and saml mm -hmm. to the idp and then finally when you are sending when you are talking when you are just uh, uh, calling the arr uh, just exchanging the arr artifact resolve request and artifact resolve uh, response then there is no any browser coming to the picture it's a back channel protocol that's why it's a direct binding so it's a mixture of indirect and direct that's why it called as a hybrid binding we have applications uh, where people are using artifact binding but less but at least we need to understand how this binding works and we have some artifact format also like uh, it's a uh, consist of the three components basically like it's a 2 byte type code 2 uh, byte endpoint index and you have the arbitrary sequence of bytes called the remaining arti uh, artifact and these three pieces of information are concatenated and base 64 encoded to yield the complete artifact and this type code uniquely identifies the artifact format saml2.0 predefines just one such artifact of type like you can say here you have one type let me mention 0x 0004 okay this is a format of that so the basically the format of type 0x 0004 artifact is further defined as follows like you have the type code you have the remaining artifact source id message handle 20 byte sequence is a message handle for this and thus a type 0x0004 artifact is of size 44 bytes unencoded and the source id is an arbitrary sequence of bytes although in practice the source id is the sa1 hash of the issuer's entity id 
and the message handle is a random sequence of bytes that uh, references a SAML message that artifact issuer is willing to produce on demand. Okay, so that's the format of HTTP artifact. You can just, uh, I'll put this in the description also, but yeah, you can get this in the, um, if you search directly in the internet, I'll just put, uh, but in the, in the description, yeah, just, to, just for your awareness. But yeah, just to understand this flow, like this is the flow. If you have any application, you can just integrate with the ping filter, right? You need to define that artifact, resolve request, uh, response, uh, address ID, and all those things. Uh, in the ping itself when you are going for the integration we can see that also in the in the test session but yeah that is about the artifact binding uh, i hope you understand if you have some confusion yeah you can please uh, put in the comment section we can discuss again and let's quickly jump to the another section of this i think that's sp versus idp initiated so yeah so let's quickly jump to that thank you